Hello friends! Beth with Thimblehooks. Today is the matching headband that goes with my scarfy super scarf that I showed you probably yesterday. So here we go with this one. Um, what I used was three skeins of eggplant and top total for, the, for both projects. The sneaky way to do that is to make this first and then make the scarf. So this is the matching headband and here is the scarf that I showed off yesterday. I love this. So with three skeins of Scarfy, Lion Brand Scarfy, you can see how long this is. This is doubled up right now. It is huge. So make this first and then continue on with this pattern. That's how easy that is. Remember what we did yesterday. There we go. So I'm going to set him aside and we're going to get started. This actually works up pretty fast. Again, this is a five bulky weight. It wants a six and a half stitch or a six and a half millimeter hook, but I am going to use a ten so it's nice and fluffy. I love the texture and the fluffiness and it's really warm. Scarfy is a great product. I love the Lime Brand Scarfy. So we're going to set him aside and start out with a slip knot any old way you want to do your slip knot. And we are going to chain 13. And there's number 13. And we're going to turn the chain over and we're going to find all these little back bumps right here. Single crochet into each one of those so we end up with 12 single crochets. And I'm going to mark this first stitch because sometimes that first stitch, especially with this scarfy because it's so fluffy and I'm using such a big hook, that that one can kind of disappear. So now we'll do the rest all the way down. We'll end up with 12 single crochets and I'll meet you back at the beginning tail. And there's number 12. Very simple. 12 single crochets. Very, very easy. So we're going to chain one, turn our work. And in this very first stitch right here, my chain does not count as a stitch. So we're working in here with a double crochet. And we're going to work double crochet all the way down so we'll end up with 12 double crochets. There's number 11, and there's my last one in that little sneaky stitch. There's number 12. Go, okay, so 12 double crochets. Very, very simple. And the next row is when we're going to start our little bit of a, kind of a basket weave, but it's a front post and a back post double crocheting. We're going to start now. We did the row of double crochets to be the base for that. So now we can start. So we chain one, turn our work, and in the very first stitch and the very last stitch is always going to be a regular old double crochet. So there's one. And now in these next five, right here, I'm going to do a front post double crochet in each one. So five front post double crochets. And in the next five, one, two, three, four, five, they are back posts. So go from behind your piece and under that post, back post double crochets. We need five of those. And five. And our very last stitch right here is a regular old double crochet. No posts needed. There you go. We already started to have some texture. Just like we're working right here. These are the front posts and these are the back posts. Front posts, back posts. 
And we're going to do that for a total of nine rows. So that was number one. Again, we'll show you one more time. The first, very first stitch. See, very first stitch is a double crochet. And the next five are front post double crochets. Go under the post and a double crochet. Under the post, a double crochet. And the next five are back posts. So you come from behind your work and under that post in a double crochet. We need five of those again. And there's number five. And the last stitch, and every row is a double crochet. No posts needed. So there you go. There's our second row. Click. I'll take this out because now it's just making noise. Right now we can do that. That was row one and two. We need nine. So we'll just continue. There we go. There's the first part. It's all curled up and all fluffy and it's really, really warm. It's just, this is so much fun. So now we're going to go on to this front part that does the crisscross. We're going to start. Well, I want to clear this out because I'm going to need this again. We're going to chain one and turn our work. And we're going to work a double crochet into that very first stitch like we have been doing. Front post times four. And then in this top one here, it's a double crochet. So this time we have a double crochet, four front posts, and a double crochet. So we're working this first half of our crisscross. So it's just the side. So we're doing half of it. So there's a sing or there's a chain one and turn. Now you just have to remember that you have less in between your double crochets. So there's my double crochet. Now since we're only working with this side right here and the entire thing, we want it to look like a front post double crochet. In order to make that happen, we have to back post for the second, the second pass. And we'll do that four times. And then our last stitch right here is a standard classic double crochet. And that was number two. We do want to keep track of these. Because we are going to do ten total. And that was number two. So we're going to do a chain one and a double crochet into this very first stitch. Four front post double crochets and in our last one right here is a standard double crochet and that's number three. I'm going to do that ten times. Here is our last one. So it's a chain one and turn, double crochet, and again the back post so we could keep our 
texture flowing here. Need four of those. Four back post double crochets. And then our last stitch is a there we go, a double crochet. Let's see, it's all fluffy. And it curls up a little bit. It just got texture, keeps everybody warm. And we're just going to finish off this end. All right, now we're finished with this part of the crisscross right here. So we're going to work on this side. So starting in the middle we want six stitches just like we did on this side because we're doing half and half. So we can crisscross. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So we'll attach our yarn here. And double crochet into that very first spot just like the beginning of every other row. Now I'm keeping in line with this look, this is the back side, so this is a back post double crochet. And just like the other side, we want four of those for this side of my crisscross. There's number three and number four. And the very last stitch is always a standard, typical, classic double crochet. Now that was row one of this side. We need ten. So I cleared out my clicker. We're starting over again. So chain one, turn our work. Now we're looking at this. This is the puffy side. So that means a first one is a standard double crochet. But then these next four, we want to work front post double crochet. So under that post in the front. I'm going to do four of these. One, two, three, and four. And we'll weave that guy in a little while. The very last one is a double crochet. Click. We want to keep track of those because these sides have to be even. We're going to do that ten for a total of 10, just like we did on the other side. So there's a double crochet. This is number three. All right, and here is our very last row. This is number 10 of this side of my crisscross. Double crochet in the first stitch, and these next four will be front post double crochets to keep the pattern going, keep the texture going. And the last one is a double crochet. Go so see this side is all front post and this side is all back post. Now we're going to cross them over. This is the tricky part, especially when it wants to curl up a little bit, but you can do it. It's not that bad. We cross these over. I'm going to make sure that we have our 12 stitches again. So don't skip a stitch. We're going to do like we did on the first part before we started with and split off this crisscross. We're going to chain one and double crochet. and keep along with this pattern. So we want to keep it with the back post double crochets. There's one, two, three, four, and Five. 
And we're going to go over to this one. See, I can. So we did the double crochet here, but then instead of just four, we did all five because we're connecting this back. So now we're going to pick up this part. We have one, two, three, four, five, six stitches. So this one will be a front post double crochet. So we're just trying to get these attached to each other again. So we end up with five, just like at the beginning. There's number four. And there's number five. And the last stitch is a double crochet. All right, now they're kind of attached to each other again. We're going to chain one, gently turn our work, double crochet in the first stitch. Ooh, forgot to do that. That was the first row. Now we're working on row two. Keeping in line with this pattern, this is a this is a back post, double crochet, one, two, three. four, and five. Keeping along with this pattern. And that was number two. It's a little twisty right in here. But now they're attached to each other again. And we're going to work just like we did here. That was the second row. And down here we did nine. So we want another nine total. chain and double keep the pattern going keep the texture going with five back post double crochet The next five are the front post. And the last one is a double crochet. And that was number three. So we're going to continue that. Exactly what we were doing on this side, right here, is going to happen on this side. That was row three. We want a total of nine. So I will meet you back here in a little bit. Just keep following the pattern, the texture pattern. Right, so that was row number nine of our texture. Now to, to uh, 
make it look the same on this end, I like to do a single crochet all the way across before we turn it into a headband. Because right now we have a big rectangle. So we will turn it into a headband in just a moment. We need 12 single crochets. There's number 12. Right, there's one last thing to do, and this is probably one of the most important parts, other than weaving in our ends in a little while, to make sure that these are crossed. You can see this particular stitches with working with scarfy curl a little bit, so you just want to make sure that this is going the way it is. It should look like a little snake. The front posts are kind of going like this and off to the side, and the back posts are going under and off to the other side, so they crisscross over. Because we want to attach this side to this side and make sure that our little twisted headband is twisted in the correct place. And it is right now. Let's see, go like this. And that one goes like this. So, let's fold it together. And we're just going to slip stitch all 12 of our stitches. And then weave in ends, of course. So we're going to chain one so we can use this stitch and that stitch and slip stitch through this side and through the other side. It's nice that the colors change so I'm working with gray on one side and the, or silver on one side and mint on the other so you can see what I'm doing. So we'll go through the mint side here and through the silver on the other side and a slip stitch. If you prefer, you could thread a needle and close it up that way too. Because this isn't going to show. It'll be on the inside. I'm doing this. That's why I'm just doing a slip stitch. You won't even won't even see it, won't even feel it. There's our last two. There's this little slip stitch. And here's my very last slip stitch. One. And one right there. Slip stitch. Now just finish that off however you want. And scissors. All right, so you just turn it inside out and weave in all of your ends. And you have a little crisscross. There's the front post double crochets, then go all the way around. And there is the back post double crochets, and they crisscross in the middle. And this will eventually um, loosen up a little bit with some wear and with a little bit of use it will loosen up a little bit and it will lose a little bit of that curl just like this one doesn't have nearly as much curl this one's all curled up right now this one is not but there we go that is the matching set it goes with the, the gorgeous super scarf that I made yesterday So there you go. Isn't that beautiful? I just love them. Very warm, very fuzzy. Scarfy, Lion Brand Scarfy is a really great product. Really, really warm. Very, very soft. The texture will keep you all toasty warm. So there we go. I hope you enjoy. Now we have a two piece set right here. There's my two piece set. My lovely super scarf and the little crisscross headband and the matching stitches. So thanks for stopping by. Thank you for supporting my small business. Please subscribe to my channel and stop back soon so I can keep making more cool things to share with everybody. It would be great. I'll see you soon. Thanks. Bye.